Hey, good morning and welcome to week four in the Geography Classroom. I hope you are all having an amazing Easter holiday. I hope that you managed to do some kind of Easter egg hunt over the weekend. I know that I got three Easter eggs and I know that I don't really have any left, so definitely enjoyed myself. Now, I hope that all of you noticed that today's session in the Geography Classroom started with our amazing new logo. I want to say a huge well done to Henry um, from Essex. He designed that logo for us and he's got a copy of the David Attenborough book winging its way to him in the post right now. Um, but I also want to say thank you to everybody else that took part. Now, if you took part and your parents sent me your address, then I have sent you a postcard, which is quite funny and quite naughty and will hopefully arrive for you in the post tomorrow. If you haven't received one. It might be because your mum or dad didn't send me your address yet. So just ask them to send it over and I will get it to you. Now, today's lesson, again, I'm super excited. This is a country that I've been to uh, quite recently. And I'm going to put a flag up on the screen now. And I want you to just see if you can figure out where our lesson is taking place today. Okay, so hopefully you've had a really good look and you've had a little figure out. So the country that we are going to have a look at today is called Botswana. Now, Botswana is in Africa and it is an incredible country. And we're going to spend the rest of today's session, after we've done the quiz, just figuring out why. Why it's so incredible. So what we're going to do before we start, like we do every session, we're going to go through the list of things that we are going to need. So today's session, you will need a blank piece of paper like we do every week. You will need your colouring pencils. You will need a normal pencil so that you can do the quiz. And you will probably need a normal pen. OK, so piece of paper, colour pencils, normal pen and normal pencil. Right. First thing that we're going to do today, then, is this. I would like you to take your piece of paper and for today's session, I would like you to fold it in half long ways. OK, now there will be a reason why. So you're going to fold it in half long ways. Now, like we do every session, we're going to start with our quiz. So take your pencil, write the numbers one to eight, all the way down the side of one of your pages. So it looks like that. Okay. Right. We're going to go through the questions one by one and then I'll hold up the board that's got the questions on. So if you get behind or you need to pause the video to catch up, that is not a problem. Right. So question number one this week. What was the Aboriginal name for Fraser Island? So what was the Aboriginal name for Fraser Island? OK, question number two. What continent is Fraser Island found on? What continent? Now remember, we had a little song to help us remember this last week. So go back through what was your little song that would help you remember it. Okay, question number three. Name the animal that lived in the sea. The one that we studied that was super dangerous, what was it called? And question number four. Now I know I mentioned this last week, is that animal that we studied that lives in the sea, would it be classed as a mammal? Would it be classed as a fish? Or would it be classed as a reptile? So I'm going to put the questions up on the screen. If I can find them. There we go. So if you need to, pause the video now and take a chance to catch up. Okay. Question number five. We're going back now to some of the work that we did in the first two sessions. So, does Antarctica have more or less plants than Australia? Does Antarctica have more or less plants than Australia? Question number six. Is the temperature in Antarctica higher 
or lower than Australia. So is the temperature higher or lower than Australia? Okay, question number seven. We are going back to the very first week and I would like you to name two of the continents that we haven't studied yet. So, question number seven, can you name continent A? So I'll just make sure you can see it on the map. And question number eight, can you name continent B? Take a good look. Okay, I'm gonna hold the board up with the questions. So, take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. And let's go through the answers. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through the answers then. So, question number one, what is the Aboriginal name for Fraser Island? So it is called Gari, but remember it has that silent K at the beginning, so it's Gari. Okay, question number two was what continent is Fraser Island found on? Now, remember, because I know we were getting this confused, it is Australasia. So remember the little rhyme that I gave you last week? Australia is a country in Australasia. That should help you remember it. Okay, question number three. What was the name of the terrifying animal that lives in the sea off Fraser Island? That is a bull shark. Okay, question number four. How would we categorise a, a bull shark? Would it be a mammal, a reptile or a fish? So it is actually a fish. Then I asked you about whether there were more or less plants in Antarctica when we compare it to Australia. And actually, there are less plants in Antarctica. Bonus point for anyone who can remember just how many plants there were and what the name of one of those plants was that we studied. Okay, question number six. Antarctica has a much lower temperature than Australia. It is so cold in Antarctica. It's one of the coldest places on Earth. And then we had our two continents. So, our two continents, and we haven't studied either of these yet, were question number seven, Europe, and then question number eight, whoop, I can't get my sticker off, was North America. Right, make sure that you've got capital letters for Europe and for North America, because they are both names. And then let's get cracking on today's lesson. Okay, so let's get cracking on today's lesson. Now, I am really excited that we are going to be studying Botswana. So Botswana is a country that I visited last year for my mum's 60th birthday. And we went on a safari there and it was absolutely amazing to see and to watch some of the animals that live there. So that's what we're gonna have a look at today. Now, the first thing I want us to do, though, is to do a little bit more map work. So in a second, I'm going to flash up a map which shows southern Africa. So it's the part of Africa that's at the bottom. And you're going to see something quite interesting about Botswana. Because Botswana is what we call a landlocked country. As in, it doesn't have a sea border. It's actually tucked inside four other countries. So when I put this map up, I want you to take a really good look at it and see which four countries it is that landlock Botswana. Hi. So you've had a chance to look at the map and hopefully what you will have found is that Botswana is landlocked by four other countries. And those four other countries are Zambia, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and South Africa. All of those countries are beautiful in their own right, but we're gonna take a look at Botswana because we're gonna have a look at the incredible wildlife that lives there. Now, today's session is gonna be slightly more difficult than last week's because what we're gonna do in today's session is we're actually going to study four different species of either plant or animal but we're going to have a look at how those animals and species link together. What's the relationship between them? Why is one important to another? 
How do they help each other to live in Botswana? Now, what we're going to be studying is actually what we call an ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem is where you have these relationships between different plants and different animals. And the name of the ecosystem in Botswana is the savanna. So say that word after me, savanna. Okay, say it quietly, savanna. Say it really loud, savanna. Okay, now for any of you that have seen The Lion King or that have seen Madagascar, then actually the savanna features in both those films. So that could be some extra homework at the end of this is to catch up by watching Lion King or Madagascar, two of my absolute favourite films. Now, what you're about to see on the screen, first of all, is the really, really important plants that live in Botswana in the savanna. And those plants are actually grasses. Now, Botswana doesn't have a lot of trees because there isn't a lot of rainfall, so the plants find it difficult to grow there. But what they do have is a lot of long grass. So I want you to have a look at the picture that's about to come up, and I want you to take a really good look at the grass there. It's not like the grass that we have in our garden, it's actually a lot taller than that. But have a look at the colour, have a look at the shape, have a look at the size and check out the fact that there aren't that many trees in that area. Okay, so you've had a look and what you should have noticed is that the grass is actually much, much longer and much, much taller than grass that we get in our garden and it's not as green. Now, that is partly because there isn't that much rainfall in the savanna, in this area. It doesn't rain very much. But what we're going to do is we are going to get a yellow pencil and then I'd like you to get a light green pencil. And in the bottom sort of part of your page, so across here, I would like you to draw that grassland, okay? So you might want to draw, I think I'm going to, a sort of brown layer for the start of the soil. And then on top of it, I'm gonna use my yellow pencil to draw some really tall grass. And I'm going to mix some lighter green grass in between it, okay? So what you should end up with along the bottom of your page, I'm sure yours will be much prettier than mine, is that long, tall grass, okay? So, I'm gonna pause the video. You guys, draw your long, tall grass. Now, of all the things I'm gonna show you today, I imagine that you will think that grass is probably the most boring part. Um, but, it isn't. Grass is really, really important. And I'm gonna explain why, just a little bit. So, Grass grows because of energy that comes from the sun. So I'm going to draw the sun in the top corner of my page. And it uses the sun's energy combined with rainfall that comes from the clouds. Not very often in Botswana, in the savannah, but it uses energy from the sun and from the rain to be able to grow. And as a result of that, we actually call it a producer. So I'm gonna write that word at the bottom and I'm gonna write grass next to it. So producer and grass. Now, it's amazing because all that grass needs to grow is sunlight and a little bit of rainfall. Now, if you went and stood out in the sunshine and it rained on you, you wouldn't be able to use that to create energy. But plants can, because they're incredible. They take the energy from the sunlight, they take the rainfall, and they use it to make energy which helps them to grow. So that's why we call grass a producer. And as I say, why it is the most important part of any ecosystem. Not just in the savanna, but of any ecosystem that exists. Hi. So, what we're going to talk about now that we've talked about grass is the next stage or the next species in our ecosystem and we're going to have a look at zebras. 
Now, zebras are one of my favorite animals. So zebras are, I suppose they're like stripy horses, but they've got black and white stripes that run all the way down them. But the thing that's really interesting about zebras is that zebras only eat plants. So a zebra can't make its energy from the sun and from the rain like a plant can, but what it does is it eats the grass and then it takes its energy from that grass. Now, I'm gonna show you a picture of a zebra and I would like you to draw a zebra on your piece of paper eating the grass. Now I'm gonna try and do this too and I have to say I have already practiced drawing a zebra and it wasn't good. So you guys have a look at the zebra that's about to come up on the screen and then draw yourself a picture of a zebra onto your sheet. Okay. So I feel quite embarrassed to show you guys this, but here is my zebra. Um, you can tell he's a zebra because he's stripy. Um, but I have actually added a video into the playlist on how to draw a zebra properly. So if there are any of you that really want to have a go at this and make him a proper zebra, there is a video there to help you. Now, as I said, our zebra is important because he only eats grass. So we're going to put a label next to him that says zebra. But we're going to add some more detail to that because he's what we call a primary consumer. Now, when you consume something, it means that you take it in or you eat it. So we've got our zebra as our primary consumer because our zebra is eating our grass. Okay, now the next animal that we're going to have a look at is the king of the savannah, okay? The most beautiful animal in, in the savannah. And I'm gonna put a picture up in just a second and I want you to just have a look at this incredible animal and then we're gonna draw him onto our graph, as, onto our picture as well. Okay, so hopefully you've had a good look at our king of the savannah, the lion. Now, lions are incredible animals and they are hunters. So our lions that you've just seen, they would, sadly, they would eat our zebras. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that picture and I want you to draw a lion onto your piece of paper, okay? So we're gonna draw a lion onto your piece of paper. Okay. okay, so I think I'm more embarrassed to show you my lion than in fact I am my zebra, which is quite worrying. But here he is, my lion, the king of the savannah. So what we're going to write next door to him is obviously that he's a lion. And then we're going to call him a secondary consumer because our lion would eat the zebra, okay? Now, what we've got is the first three really important parts of our ecosystem. And we've just got one more that we need to include. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is actually, if you remember that photograph from the beginning that showed us the, uh, the grassland, there was just one tree that was in that picture. So we're going to draw our tree and add it to our diagram, okay? Now, you don't need to really draw any leaves on the tree because a lot of the year round, those trees don't have leaves because there isn't really enough rainfall. So the plant, the tree finds it difficult to grow. But we are gonna draw in the tree, okay? So it looks a little bit like that. Because the last animal that we're gonna have a look at today lives in that tree. And I can tell you that they are probably one of the ugliest animals I have ever seen. But what we're gonna draw up there is a vulture. Now, vultures are massive birds, okay? They are absolutely huge. And vultures are, they're quite, they're quite disgusting. Vultures don't eat anything apart from dead animals. So if our lion was eventually to die, that's when the vulture would lean in and have their dinner. They would eat the lion once it had died. So I'm gonna put the picture of the vulture up on the screen and I'd like you to draw the vulture 
into your tree, okay? Okay, so another amazing drawing. This here is our vulture. So we're gonna write that word next to it, vulture. I think it even just sounds like a mean word. And then we're gonna add a label to this, which is decomposer. Because vultures eat dead animals, okay? So if our lion was ever to die, that is what would happen to him. He would be eaten by our vulture. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to link these four things together that we've spent so much time drawing. And I need you to take out like a red pencil or a pink pencil, something really bright. Because what we're going to add to our ecosystem is some arrows that show the direction that the energy moves. So when the energy moves from the producer to the zebra, when the when energy moves from the zebra to the lion, and then when the energy moves from the lion to the vulture. So I will draw my arrow on my map, on my drawing first, and then you can add yours in afterwards. There we go. So what we've got now is the energy going from our producer, the grass, into our zebra, and then the energy moving from our zebra into our lion, and then eventually the energy moving from our lion into our vulture, the decomposer. Now that is a very, very simple ecosystem, okay? We actually would call it a food chain because food chains show us how energy moves from one part to another within a series of different animals, okay? Now, I've included an amazing video, not for the faint-hearted, on the playlist, which shows a lion chasing a zebra. So if you're a bit squeamish, maybe don't watch it, but if you want to have a look and kind of see how a lion actually behaves when it's in the wild and how it would go after a zebra, that would be amazing. But that brings us to the end of session four. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really had fun. And next week, we are going to be doing something special. Because next week, on, on Wednesday, the 22nd of April, which is when we do our geography lessons, is actually something called Earth Day. And so next week's session, we are going to focus all on Earth Day and we're going to create an amazing project between us um, that looks at nature and looks at why we should be protecting all of these amazing animals that we've been learning about. Right, I hope you've had fun today. I have. I'll see you soon.